Welcome back, folks, to another episode of Business from the Best Boat podcast on the Serious Angler Network, powered by X2 Power. And guys, today we've got a great show lined up. We are kind of in the sprint, the end of the sprint of my tournament season here. I've got a good long break after the uh, Western Toyota Series wrapped up. And uh, after that, basically a Bass Nation uh, in Oklahoma. And uh, that actually will be just finishing up when this airs. But I am excited for a little bit of a break moving to Idaho. So a lot to do, uh, there. And then, uh, after that kind of get into the fall, some championships events, the Toyota series championship and, and as well as uh, additional ones there. So excited for this little bit of a break. Um, it's been kind of really, <clears throat> really, uh, consistent, just a lot of tournaments, which is great, but at the same time, it's nice to be back and also much more consistent with the podcast from that standpoint or, uh, have more planned out guests and that sort of a thing. So anyways, thanks for bearing with, with me through it all. Um, so this show today has been one I've been, uh, I've been really trying to, to work to put together for a while. It's a brand that is very well known in the bass fishing industry. Um, has had a lot of praise over the years and, and I just had run into, uh, or ran into Steve actually at, uh, the classic, of this year in 2023. So, uh, chatted with him a little bit and said, Hey, I think it'd be a, a cool show to get you on. Talk, talk about the business itself, talk about everything. And, and that business is Bob's machine. Um, super well known, right? When it comes in the bass fishing world, when you're talking hydraulic jack plates, it is, uh, in my opinion, anyway, one that, that seems to really set the standard. So without further ado, let's get Steve in here. How's it going, Steve? Hey, doing well yourself. Doing well, man. I'm doing well. I'm jealous. You're in Florida. It's probably beautiful. Um, it is. It is. <laughs> you guys had a little bit of weather, uh, though, from what I understood the last couple of days. Yeah, it's been raining a bit, but uh, we need it. It's been so dry for the past month. So, uh, yeah, grass greens up pretty quick and uh, no complaints. That's awesome. I feel like I start every show talking about the weather. So I apologize for folks that are like, man, why are you talking about the weather all the time? But it's springtime here in Colorado. So uh, it's also starting to green everything up. And, um, I'm excited because it's a, it's a good time to be fishing. Um, for you this, this time of the year, are things kind of, we're past boat show season, that kind of a thing. Do you have a little bit of a lull here from that side of things or what's, what's busy in your world right now? Uh, we're always busy. I mean, we try to make time, get on the water when we can, but, um, not next week, the week after we actually do the special forces show in Tampa, which is a pretty cool show. We get to meet with a lot of the you know, generals, commanders, all that. Um, and we sell, believe it or not, we have quite a bit of work boat jack plates to the military. And uh, so we oh, go wow. to that show and have fun at that. Um, May I head down, down to Australia. We do uh, the sanctuary code boat show down there. So that's a lot of fun. And so we're always going somewhere and uh, working on design, new products. Um, just came actually, we had a, a meeting with our patent attorney. We got two new products that we're going to be launching soon. Um, Happy to talk about them as soon as everything's filed, but not today. But uh, hopefully, right. we can start talking about those real soon. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun growing the brand over the years, and uh, it's a great industry to be in. Yeah, no, that's that's great to hear. And and I'll be curious. Uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to have you back on to talk about those products. I love innovation in this industry and and just uh, how things change so quickly. Um, and and with that, you know, as you're saying, growing this brand over the years and and seeing this process. So how did you get your start? with bobs and uh, i mean what what's the what's the background for you uh interesting i, I never knew i was going to be going into uh, the fishing industry so my father owns the company okay um, and he never saw himself in the fishing industry either probably but um <laughs> so he was in the uh, clothing business he worked for uh, for vanity fair which is lee wrangler uh also you know those are the big brands the denim brands right and um he became an independent rep and uh he was really focusing on international sales and um he enjoyed it, but he really wanted to do more domestic stuff. He had enough money where he felt he could buy a brand, and he went to researching different brands and um, going through lists of you know twenty that narrowed down to ten, narrowed down to five, and the final two were actually between the company that makes marking pens for surgery and Bob's Machine. No way. His his logic was you know he was a baby boomer. What do people need? It's going to be medical or, or retirement because they're all retiring. So that's how we kind of picked those two industries. Um, we uh, did a lot of saltwater fishing in Charlotte Harbor. Um, he knew the family liked fishing. My brother and I were still in college at the time. My younger brother was still in high school. We, there's three of us. Yeah. And um, none of us ever saw ourselves working for our father. My older brother and me were both <laughs> Eagle Scouts, though. We're big outdoors guys. Uh, I mean, we grew up on a top of 12 fishing all sorts of lakes and always having a lot of fun. And like I said, we'd fish Charlotte Harbor in the summers. Yeah. And, um, so my father wound up buying Bob's. Uh, 
Bob stayed on for three years as a consultant, taught us a lot about the industry. Um, I said, we knew saltwater, we knew a little bass, but we didn't know obviously everything there was. So it was good having Bob there for three years. We learned a lot and um, started going through the products. My brother and I, my older brother and I are both engineers. Um, so we really went through, redeveloped a lot, made it stronger. Okay. We've done a lot of growth and we saw where things needed to go in the industry and uh, started working at it and, you know, just did a full immersion. We started fishing a lot more. We started just getting out on the water and, and treating it professionally. And um, I mean, we're car guys, bike guys. And uh, I mean, like I said, we, we fish, but I mean, really that's when we go out, we got boats, we started spending a lot of time on the water and learning more. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. I love stories like that. And, and also uh, I just, I, I've been, just my mind, how it works kind of on the business side of things is always looking at those kind of opportunities. And every time I have an opportunity to talk to somebody who had kind of that beginning phase and into something, it's like talking about analyzing businesses to buy. I thought that's always been something that's really interesting to me and looking for kind of that value add, right. Of where you can go in and say, okay, where can we make improvements here? Um, obviously the numbers have to be strong or at least there has to be something there, uh, in the beginning. But that is, that is awesome to hear that it was like, we're going to, we're, he's basically like, I, I want to do something more domestic and I want it to be, uh, my thing. And, and I'm going to go find a business to buy. And, um, I've always thought that's a really cool way to go about it because you're going into something that at least has some establishedness, not saying that you're going to go in and, uh, change and add a bunch of stuff, but it's cool to see that, uh, that that's, uh, that's how it all happened for you guys. Yeah. Now, now with your, and your brother's background being engineers. So you guys came in. So when was it, when was it actually purchased? 2003. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So we're talking almost 20 years ago now yeah. uh, or 20 years ago now. So, so at that point, were you a, uh, I guess, how old were you then? Were you, were you just waiting to go become an engineer or what stage of life were you in? Yeah. So I, I went to school for electrical engineering. Uh, my older brother, he was just graduating that year. Okay. Uh, and mechanical engineering. So he went down first and uh, I went down you know, in summers and started working because uh, we we're going to school up north in Connecticut. OK, and, uh, I said my younger brother, he was still in high school at the time. So uh, and who's also come to work for us now. And um, he does a lot more of the business side. He works on the IT customer service uh, uh, shipping. We've just implemented a new um, software called NetSuite. He's been a, a great help in putting that together, uh, which is just a, a much more automated system to keep track of inventory controls and sales and work orders and all that. Oh, cool. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So a cool family business. I mean, you guys are all involved. Yep. yep. And again, none of us saw it happening, but you know, it's kind of hard to say, no, I don't want to be involved in the fishing industry. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, and I recognize you too, just at different shows that I cast everything you really seem, I mean, especially probably with your role being on the, on the sales side and the marketing side. Uh, I mean, you're out all the time. Like you, it seems like you guys are really out uh, doing a lot of trade shows. Yeah. You know, you can put all the money in, in TV shows and this and that, but nothing works better than word of mouth and getting to meet people and explain it yourself. And people really understand it when you're able to show them it and, and they understand, you know, you see a, a quick splash screen. People don't always understand what the brand is, but when you're able to show it. You can touch it. It makes all the difference in the world. So yeah, we believe in trade shows. We believe in getting out there, uh, supporting tournaments. You know, we do the, um, the Bass Pro Collegiate Tour, uh, uh, mm. we try to go get out there and, and get in front of people make sure they understand the product a little more because um, when we first started, like I said 20 years ago, and it's like, wait, there's a product that when we we're in shallow water, you can just lift the motor up. You know, so so few people back then had ever heard of it, and of course, it's grown a lot since then. And um, it's almost now it's hard to find someone that doesn't know what a jackpot is. But uh, it's been a lot of education over the years, and and people finally seem to get it. So it's it's been cool. It's been a lot of fun to see. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And so uh, again, 20 years ago, was it was it? still jack plates the main business for bobs and it was, yeah, that that was, that was hydraulic it was, as well or, or just just fixed at that time yep uh, it was hydraulic um actually we we have a lot of the old bob prototypes you know bob started the company in 1978 wow. and uh, a lot of the features of the the, the basic simplicity of the jack plate, you know sliding up and down and, and the delrin bushings that was the same but his original hydraulic pump actually came out of a ford thunderbird uh, it was the convertible top for a car that's how we found a pump and uh, eventually you know, moved to the, the parker style pumps and um, it grew, but, uh, I mean, there's so many different changes over the years and we have, I don't know if I call it a display, but a collection of, of all the old Jack was, it's cool to watch the progression of how it's gone. And then since we've gotten it, we've gone through our own, you know, four or five changes to the plates and, uh, just keep making them stronger, better, faster. Yeah. And, and I mean, something to think about too, uh, especially with, with what you're talking about, um, 
military contracts. And I'm just thinking through like, what's cool about Jack plates. Uh, and I, I would love to know kind of, or, or get an idea of the percentage of stuff that you guys do with like bass boats versus the rest of the boating industry. Right. Because there's so much more than just our bass fishing industry. But, um, you know, as motors are growing with it, we keep seeing on the saltwater side and we're seeing Rick Pierce with bass cat throwing four fifties on the back of Jaguars and things like that. I mean, these things just have to keep getting bigger and stronger, like you're saying, because you're supporting so much more weight back there. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of hard to figure out that breakdown because, you know, we sell through so many distributors and dealers. And so you don't know exactly where they're all winding up, but I'd say probably half of it's probably, uh, bass. I mean, bass is very strong. Wow. And, uh, yeah. I mean, the duck industry, uh, amazing what a, a $15,000 duck boat less, you know, some of these duck boats are less and what these people put into it and accessories just, it's crazy. I mean, then again, you get guys buying $5,000 shotguns. So, I mean, they can afford it, but uh, <laughs> I mean, there, there's some people out there fitting every single boat with every toy you can imagine. And uh, so right. it's a big industry and, and all sorts of different parts are supporting. I mean, we got pontoon guys, uh, Playcraft, great customer of ours. They're, they're putting twin 450 pontoon boats uh, with jackpots in every one. So, I mean, holy cow! Uh, everyone's kind of wants to maximize their speed, their performance, their shallow water abilities. Um, I mean, we have some pontoon guys that just say they have it for, solely for docking. They get to the dock. They don't want their lower unit hanging those four or five inches in the water. They just oh. want to jack it up when they're fully tilted, make sure it's completely out of the water. So um, God bless you. Go. It's, it's, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, great product uh, to use for that too. And and on the uh, on the military side of things, is that now for uh, for folks? I guess I mean military boats and stuff going in super shallow water, or what's the what's the reasoning for those guys? We have a combination. I mean, yeah, we have a lot that's super shallow water. A lot of it's they want to maximize efficiency. Um, I mean, some of it is also weight dependent. You know, because the boat's going to ride so much deeper when you have a squad of twelve guys with gear on it, with you know oh. plate. You know, it sits so low in the water, they're just not getting the whole shot they need. Um, a lot of this goes. I said this is a special forces show. We go to the SOF. Um, a lot of that is they wouldn't need to get out to get a pop up on plane and get going. So, uh, there's a situation like that. And then we do a lot of work boats too. Um, actually there's no NDA here. I mean, we've sold to NASA recovery craft. Um, uh, I mean, uh, which actually is the only real things they need signed are there are no Chinese communication chips in our product. Um, <laughs> maybe what NASA wants. Wow. But, yeah. So, I mean, we sell all over the place and, uh, everyone, like I said, they, they're going shallow. They want efficiency. They want to maximize their engine. I mean, um, no one wants to waste, waste fuel and, and, uh, uh, lower units or props. So. Right. Right. Makes a lot of sense. It's just cool to me the the different avenues that you guys have, uh, like you're saying, you get to get, you get to do stuff with special forces, uh, to bass boat guys, to every, every little thing. Uh, and I, I bet over the years too, it's been fun to like, um, find something new, right. For, for a complete an industry that maybe hasn't seen it before or, or seen the capabilities of what a, a jack plate can do. Absolutely. Yep. And the other thing, you know, I, I hit before just on some of our trade shows, but going to different markets that I've never seen them before. Like I said, I'm going out to Australia um, uh, next month. Um, amazing how few people there have seen it. So, I mean, that's also, like I said, a lot of education, a lot of getting in people's hands. And um, my father, he was big in the Middle East uh, with his former life and clothing. And uh -huh. um, 20 years ago, that was the first international show we did. It was the Dubai Boat Show. We've gone to every single one since then. So 20 years we've been going to that show with the exception of the past two years that got canceled from COVID. Um, but now you can't find a boat out there that doesn't have a Bob's jack plate. Um, they've tested all of the jack plates out there. Ours are the only ones that last that high saltwater content and the, the heat out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's amazing. I actually had a cool video. Uh, I'll send you a link to it later, but our YouTube channel, uh, yeah. you walk past five boats with five motors on each one. And every single one is five jack plates. It's just a, a crazy In Dubai. In Dubai. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's, I mean, and I don't know much about Dubai, but it's, it, serious uh high high income right in in, in parts of yeah. yeah yeah that's crazy i mean you're talking five motors with five jack plates yeah. um that's insane and that's really really cool to see like uh the international side of things that's so so and you guys haven't been to australia before so it'd be first time in australia no, we uh, i went in 2019 and uh, then they got shut down hard from covid so it's like you know we started getting growth there and i have a distributor and they're awesome they do a great job but a lot of the people, they do want to meet the people from the actual company. And again, right. there's just some things that I know the inner workings of that can help explain a little bit better and help the growth. And um, we just want to keep growing there. I mean, there's a ton of boats. It's a, a huge industry. Um, and last time we went to the Sydney show, now we're going up to Sanctuary Cove, which is like the Northeast, uh, a little bit more of like their Florida. So I'm excited. This will be my first time at Sanctuary Cove. So I'm really excited for the show. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and 
as far as the jack plates themselves go, so uh, obviously there's just been uh, updates and and little tweaks and everything as you've kind of expanded through the years. Um, but what you guys also do are a bunch of kind of uh, niche products, call it if you will, with with bass boats and and all kinds of things. But um, and all in the in the U.S. manufactured in the U.S. But as far as those kind of projects, what's uh, what's one that you're excited about or, or maybe one that's uh, a pretty common product right now for you guys in the bass world that's not a jack plate? I mean, the, the little products we make, like you're talking about, like the deck plugs, the deck savers, the big D handles. Right. I mean, we sling the heck out of those. I mean, they're great. They're, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks a piece. You know, they're nothing. That's too much. Uh, so, you know, it allows people to just, you know, they can add one on whenever they want. You know, it's not something like the jack plate where you got to save up 1500 bucks plus install. Um, so yeah, we sell a lot of those parts and it's cool. It just flashes up the deck of your boat. It's something easy. It works. Like you said, they're made in America. Um, yeah, some of that stuff is a lot of fun. You know, we can work on something new, you know, uh, we get a customer, Oh, you don't make it for my, my pedestal mount size. You know, I got this, this walleye boat. Can you customize it? Yeah, we can make a change in the program. You know, we, we do oh, all this cool. programming in house and you know, send them out a sample. You know, they check it out for us. You know, we, we have a good relationship with most of our customers and, uh, and pro staff and, it's pretty fun to just make a uh, change and get new things out on the boats. And, yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. And and as far as the actual jack plates go, we're talking duck boats um, to, to very, very large saltwater boats. But uh, what's the smallest motor that you guys will, will, will put a jack plate on or, or I mean, could be utilized? Make, I mean, we make ones for, for, you know, little, little tiny clampons. I mean, I got a 3.5, 1970 uh, Evinrude two cylinder or 3.5 horsepower two cylinder. Holy cow. I, mean, I got that little mini jack plates. I mean, we have a little, and they cost, I think they're, they're 200, 200 bucks, something like that. They're not expensive. And um, I think it's four inch of lift. So, you know, throw on the back of your John and just gets up a little bit higher for, for the guys in the shallows and the rocks, you know, and um, stuff like that pays for itself instantly. You save yourself one propeller, it's paid for itself, you know, so. Right, that, right. That, that's always, I always like to relate that to people. It's like a propeller. So stainless steel prop, we'll get a Fury 4, what it costs now. I mean, uh, it's a thousand bucks almost, you know. It, you, you get a jack put on there, you make sure you jack it up. You're going to save yourself a prop. It, it pays for itself. So, we, we, yeah. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. And, yeah, those fur, Furies, too, of all things, man. I don't know what the heck is going on with those, but it seems like they, they seem to be having, uh, uh, I don't know, one – I hear of one slinging almost every tournament I go to as far yeah. as – And it's is it the metal there, or, or do you have any thoughts with that? I mean, anything I'm saying, I'm obviously speculating. But I'm right, right, speculating. right. We're not. We're not. This isn't a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would just guess. You know, the, they've been so slammed. I know they just opened up their new facility to to get more motors out. I think they've probably just been overworked, and uh, so I don't know if it's they're not letting the casting set up long enough. If it's just being rushed through a mold, I don't know if there's some other quality control issue. I, we haven't had any metal supply issues throughout all of COVID. We never really, we never had a metal issue. You know, we had some troubles getting some of our wire where we had to change the sheathing color because we couldn't get the proper red wire, stuff like that. Um, but we never had issues getting aluminum or stainless. So, again, I don't know what Mercury is doing. I don't know if they had any type of metal changes, but I'm guessing it's just a quality control or something trying to rush because there was just such a boating boom these past few years and right. they cranked out more motors than anybody else. So, um, Good for them in terms of selling motors. I, I don't know what's going on with those props. I've heard the same thing as you, but I run yeah. a Fury. I think it's the best prop out there in, in right. performance on bass boats, but yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, as far as kind of relationships go with some of these boat brands, uh, motor brands as well, um, do you have any, uh, I guess it would be like, specific brands that only run a bobs or is it is it not that exclusive with these brands or or how does that work um with you guys i mean some people are, are nobody's exclusive us i never ask anybody to sign exclusive um but we have plenty of brands that are running 90 95 99 percent bobs um just because they have less warranty issues with us we're a better product we supply on time we haven't had any supply issues um but i've always felt that Asking for someone to give exclusive is kind of a, a, a BS thing. I believe that our product speaks for itself. And if you give us a chance of being an option, it'll sell. And that's what's always happened. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there's a couple of guys I, I could throw out that are exclusive with us, but I almost don't feel that that speaks benefits to us because whenever it's an exclusive deal, I feel it's like, well, we'll, we'll cut you some type of kickback. We'll do this, we'll do that. And right. we need to do it. Our product's strong if it speaks on its own. And uh, so I think we sell more, more jackpots than anybody else because we just make the best product. Yeah. I like that mindset. Um, that's a good point as far as like, if you, if you go down that exclusivity route, uh, there's always that like 
need to feel return from the other person. Like, well, if I'm doing this, do I get, you know, like you're saying, as far as if, if the product speaks for itself, you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about anything like that, as well as like, you can just say, you can choose whichever option you like. And if you like ours better, let's run it. Yep. Yep. Amen. I like it. I like it. Um, as far as just general breakdown of jackplate stuff, I think a good thing to do on this show would be to do an overview of if someone has say a manual jackplate on their boat, or maybe they don't have a jackplate on their boat right now. If they're interested in a hydraulic jackplate, um, I guess maybe go over a couple of the benefits and where you, where just traditionally you want to run that thing in say rough water, shallow water, just the general maybe breakdown for folks who aren't super familiar with it. Yeah. So as you go back further on your setback, you put more leverage on the hull. So as you put that extra leverage, you'll get more bow lift out. Um, the less your hull is touching the water, the less drag you have, the more speed, more efficiency you'll get. As well as putting it back further, you're putting your prop into cleaner water. So you're going to reduce your prop slip, which is also going to gain you some benefits. Um, then in terms of your height, a lot of it's going to depend on, on the boat and how it is. I mean, we're in the bass scene. Uh, most bass boats, they sit very rear heavy. They're down. Um, right. So for your best hole shot, you'll start with it up. And then as you hit the throttle and the boat starts lifting up, you'll start dropping the jack plate down. Um, I find a lot of people, they never get proper training on jack plates. Uh, and they seem to set it in one place and leave it during the whole hole shot. You should move it if you want your best hole shot. Start with it up, and you'll find that exact position that works best for you. You might be all the way up. You might only be four inches up. Start with it up. And as the boat starts lifting, as soon as you hit your foot throttle, start dropping it down, and you'll find that that boat's going to lift off much faster. Then okay. once you're up on plane, you'll start lifting up to you find your sweet spot where you're not cavitating, uh, you have good prop bite, um, all that. Uh, typically speaking, rough water, you're going to want to make sure, you know, if you're bouncing out of the water, you're, you're going to be cavitating. You're going to want to drop your jack plate down. Um, when you're underway, when you're, you're running, you're going to jack it up. Um, I said just that sweet spot where you're not cavitating, it runs right. And you're feeling that performance. Um, we sell gauges. We also have a NEMA system where it shows on your GPS your height. Um, it's great. A lot of guys, especially the pro owners, they'll tell you they go 100% by feel. They just go by that prop bite. You can feel when it's about to, to not hold anymore. So you want to make sure you have good prop bite, good control. You're still able to steer nice and well. Um, and that'll, that'll be how you run it. But then you look at some of the saltwater boats, the, the skiffs, where uh -huh. when they're off plane, they're super flat. They're not sitting low in the water. So they're actually going to bury their prop for the whole shot. And uh, they'll probably keep it buried the whole way up because then once they're up, and then they'll, they'll lift up a little bit more. But if they put it up, they'll probably cavitate. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting to see how different boats react to, to where it is. And uh, it's really just how, for the whole shot, at least, it's how the boat sits when you're off plane and, and you're just sitting there. So, yeah. That makes a lot of sense from a bass boat perspective. And what about if, I mean, just from a, if you're in super shallow water standpoint, right, that's another big benefit. I mean, you are generally, is the thought process to jack that way up so your lower unit and your prop aren't going to scrape the bottom as much and you're going to kind of almost like, jump forward or what's the, the thought process? Yeah, so I mean, in terms of the whole shot, you'd probably do the same in a bass boat. Start with it all the way up and, and drop it. it right. Just drop it as low as you can to still maintain your prop bite Yep. Um, and not go down so deep that it ever it gets buried. But at that point, once you're up on plane, you're, you're so much higher anyway, so you can get back out. Uh, so that's going to help you a lot. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do if I was in shallow waters. Just start with it up and, and maybe not bury it as far during your whole shot and if, yeah. you're, if you're up on plane, though, the same, you'll probably back off the throttle because obviously when you're at wide open, you're only running an inch, two inch up. You're, you're really rarely running all the way up on a bass boat. Right. So as you're going, uh, if you see the shallows, you're probably going to want to slow down just to be cautious. You don't, you never right. have the drop coming up. But you don't want to stay up on plane. I'd stay up at the, the slowest speed you can stay on plane because as soon as you drop down, you lose all that, that depth um, and just figure out where your sweet spot is there again. Uh, then when you're at that slower speed, you can probably run it up at six, maintaining prop bite and uh, really be cruising through the shallows. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea that you guys have a NEMA connection. That's really cool. As far as I've always seen the gauges and I've always, uh, you know, been impressed with also just how smooth the bobs is. Um, but the, uh, to have it on your graph nowadays, I mean, you're seeing that, right. You're seeing graphs connect to everything with, uh, with guys, as far as to have a pretty clean dash, we don't have the old bass boats that, you know, you have got all these different gauges and then you have no room for your graph, but that's cool to have that uh, ability when you run and have it right there on your map. Yeah. And that was another fun project. Uh, first time I really got to work with all the different MFD companies and, uh, shout out to Garmin. They jumped right out. They were the first, they adopted it instantly. Um, then uh, a Humminbird, they've now released it, so all the new Humminbirds have it. Oh, and cool. uh, Lawrence has released it on their Ranger Ride system. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I know they're going to be releasing on all the, the 
Simrads and Lorentz graphs uh, at some point soon. I don't know, have a date, unfortunately, but uh, so they're right there. And hopefully that's going to drive all the rest of the, the other guys. I mean, those, those are the three big ones for us in the bass world. But I mean, Ray Marine, Faruna, all of them, hopefully they all follow suit and get it too. But um, it seems like the industry's responded really well. He like said, everyone wants that nice clean dash. And uh, it was fun. It was cool, you know, working with all their engineers and um, all the brands have been really fun to work with, actually. They've all been really cool. And um, I said, I just give a quick shout out to Garmin again because they were the first to jump on it for us. I mean, they didn't make us wait. They didn't make us jump through hoops. They just did it. I was said, very impressed go. with them. Yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Uh, as far as batteries getting lighter in bass boats, right? We've had this kind of this, this craze of lithium and the traditional heavy back end bass boat, especially too on, you see on older boats too, just like fuel tanks being further back. It seems like nowadays they've leveled that out to some extent or pushed them forward a little bit to where that boat um, maybe has less of that. Obviously that, that probably changes uh, some of your feel and, and, and getting that boat on pad. But a question that I had too, and I think we just started discussing it at the classic was um, you were showing somebody the shims the shims. So, so can you talk a little bit about those or, or what those are specific for? They're, they're like almost metal wedges to me. Yeah, they're, they're metal wedges. We make them in a, a two, a five and a 10 degree. Most bass guys are doing the two or the five. Okay. And uh, actually we've had a couple of our, our big name pro staff guys have me make them custom 3.5 degree wedges. So we might be releasing those soon. Oh, and nice. um, they're telling us just from switching from the, the AGMs to all the lithiums, how much weight they've taken off the back. Now, most people, they run the wedges in a, a where's the fat side up, uh, to get more tuck under to help with your hole shot. Okay. Since the boats are getting so light. Like I said the bass boats aren't sitting so deep like we were talking about. Now they're sitting yeah. so much lighter. They actually are running the wedges with the fat part on the bottom. They're running positive trim on them. And that way, um, when they're all the way tucked down, they're, they're just getting a little more air out. And some are getting four or five miles an hour just from out of the hundred dollar wedges. Yeah. And, wow. Uh, yep. So, um, and I think you're right. I think a lot of the boat builders probably over the course of, of years, you know, start getting two, three, Two batteries, three batteries, four batteries. Now some of them run five. You, know, you got two, two on your motor, and you got three for your trolling motor. So it's five batteries in the back. So they start moving their gas tanks forward to compensate that weight. And um, now all of a sudden, there's AGM, so they have to move their tanks back, and that's just not something you do overnight. So I don't know how long it'll take for them to correct it in terms of, of changing to uh, moving the fuel tanks back. I've had boat builders, a bunch of our OEM boat builders, have started going to larger setback jack plates to push the motor weight back for us. So that helps get that squat. Okay. And a lot of people are adding these wedges. So uh, the wedges, if you have a, a setup, you don't want to have to buy a new jack plate that's bigger because, again, that's $1,500 plus. Uh, you get a $100 set of wedges, uh, go between your motor and your jack plate. They fit all the different brands. And uh, yeah, like I said, but people tell me they gain four miles an hour. Um, pretty, pretty crazy. That's impressive. Yeah. Wow. That's a, it's a great, a great solution. Um, and, an uh, economic solution as far as to once you've got your boat built out and that kind of a thing, but that's crazy to hear these different boat builders changing things up as far as having a further setback. I mean, cause right. Cause the idea is just to have little of that boat in the water at that, at that full, full out potential when you're really running. Um, but to just hear how like that thought process and then the fuel tanks potentially moving back. The other thing that's got me interested too right now is just the amount of weight we're putting on the front of these boats as far as with trolling motor, three graphs, all on the absolute nose of the bow. Like, how is that going to change things too, you know? But, and that's the same. They're just, they're not getting that bow lift. So that's why they're running these wedges in the, in reverse to give them that positive trim, just get that, your bow back up. So yeah, a real quick, easy solution. I mean, if you have a, an engine hoist, uh, some type of crane, I mean, I've seen guys use, use big old oak trees or, or you know, their, their uh, tractor buckets. I mean, the only, that's the only part that, People can't do on their home hosts. They don't have some way to take the motor off. But otherwise, it's four bolts. It's well, six bolts now. But you know, it's not it's not a hardship to add these wedges. You know, it's just swap them between the motor and the jack plate, and you good to go. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, we just uh, uh, I had a my team partner just rebuilt his motor or got his motor rebuilt, and so same deal. We just borrowed an engine hoist, and it really it really wasn't that bad as far as and and luckily we didn't have to do all that much there. But same deal with the engine hoist and that kind of a thing. Like you're saying, it's it's. There's not really that many bolts on the, when it comes to the yeah. end of your upward. And once you have everything uh, disconnected, you have a gap there. You don't have to disconnect steering or anything like that. You can just do what you need to do. And yeah, back yeah. Up. we can disconnect anything. We have motor hooked up, we have the steering hooked up. And you know, a lot of people don't realize this. So uh, we'll see how much Harbor Freight sales go up right now. So uh, <laughs> Harbor Freight, 200 bucks, you can get yourself a foldable engine crane. You know, they're, they're not bad. And um, a lot cheaper. I mean, you get some mechanics that are charging, you know, five, six, seven hundred bucks for a jack plate install. Go buy yourself a two hundred dollar hoist. Go do it on your own in a garage in a weekend and uh, feel that accomplishment. So there you go. Yeah. I like it. I like it. 
Um, well, I guess, could you give us a teaser at all? I know that these products you're talking about for the future uh, are new coming out, but are they jack plate related? Are they completely separate, something completely new? Uh, new new to Bob's. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I like and it. Uh, I've worked with one of them. We've worked pretty close with one of our the new OEMs out there. Um, and it's not exclusive to them. I'll give them a little bit of a bump. A bump. The, if you guys are watching, they'll, they'll know what we're talking about. Uh, the guys at Icon asked me to develop this with them. Um, cool. So, yeah, so this will be going on their boats coming up. Um, and it's not exclusive to them. We'll be selling to all the other boat builders in retail as well. And uh, that, that one's going to be fun. And the other something new that's just kind of a, a personal thing I thought we could make a little bit better. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, I said, I'll get you a sample when they're ready. So Cool, man. Yeah. Cool. I love it. I love hearing all the, the different innovation. It sounds like your your brain uh, and your team there is just always working on something uh, something to be new. And, and um, it's cool, too, just as, as things change, right? I mean, we're just going to see uh, new products, but then also just as electronics change and, and everything else, there's just it seems like there's a never ending um, innovation, which is just cool to me. I mean, this isn't the tech industry by any means or stuff where it moves super quick, but man, it sure seems to move pretty fast in this industry. Oh, it does. And I mean, there are some things that, I mean, still people kind of write it off because we've had fish finders for, for 30 years. When you think about the technology, the sonars that are in that and that we have stuff that, I mean, people are using it to help search and rescue people, find people. I mean, it's pretty cool technology we have in our industry that people in, in you go to CES, the big consumer electronics show in Vegas, they don't see that type of uh, imaging like we see underwater. I mean, we, we're in a pretty special industry to have that type of technology. I mean, and watching some of these pros do their forward facing sonars and how good they are at reading it, it is impressive. It's crazy, man. It is, it is getting insane. And I, and I love it. I'm a forward facing nut and um, it is, it is incredible. And I can only imagine too, like you're saying, seeing the innovation that we have, but then, uh, there's so many other uses than just the fishing industry with this stuff. And, and just the same way that Bob's has found that, uh, with all these other branches and branches in the military and, and duck boats and all this stuff. It's just, there's so many other things than our small little industry to me, but it's, uh, it's cool to see. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I saw too on, on your guys's website here, you've got a, uh, tournament rewards program. And I didn't, I didn't know that was, uh, that was there. Actually, maybe I, I've seen that in college stuff, but do you have any, uh, any thoughts on that for any tournament anglers out there running a Bob's or, or looking to, to run a Bob's? Uh, check it out guys. I mean, it's, it's, I forget the price, uh, what it costs now, 40 bucks or something. You get a t-shirt with it. Um, you know, if, if you're winning tournaments, you're giving up money. I mean, we do the BFLs, we do the opens. We obviously do the big leagues. Um, we do a bunch of other clubs. If you're looking to add a club, you know, send us an email and we'll see if we can add your, your club. And, uh, yeah, win some money. Use a bobs. Use a bobs. Yeah. I like it. I like it. The other thing that always amazes me too that's that's fun at the at the trade shows is you guys always have a motor on a on a bob sitting there. Um and then also the the mounts that you guys have for the multiple motors and stuff. Like those things are got to they're just huge, man. Like you with these these saltwater boats and you're in the perfect place in Florida, but like man, there's a lot going on there. It's amazing how many uh of these big boats are putting jackpots on. Um so actually, this is probably a few years ago, but I still really like this article. Um, it was on, by Speed on the Water, which is a, a South Florida Go Fast magazine, online magazine. Um, these guys with their Nortec 38 were tra- chasing the 100 mile per hour mark there in the high 90s. They had four jackpots to so their four 400 boat, and they hit 101 or 102. It's amazing what some jackpots can do. But yeah, these guys put four or five motors on four or five jackpots, and uh, yeah, some people got more money than I do. I don't have to go on one of those, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> People do cool stuff, and um, I mean the offshore stuff. They they spend money like crazy. Um, a lot of them they they don't always do the the hydraulics. A lot of them like the the manuals because they have such intricate steering linkage between the way the motors sit with the different depths and all them. Really? Uh, yeah. So they typically a lot of the boat builders just want to give them um, the ability to jack it up, and they'll preset everything for them. Um, some of the more techie guys they'll run the hydraulics because they understand it, but. A lot of these guys, they have the money. They want to buy a big boat. They aren't. It isn't their entire lifestyle the way like a bass guy where it's th- their life. You know, it's like these guys. They they got so much money. They're going and doing a million different things every week. So they just set set up with four or five manual jackpots. They dial it into a good height and they let them go. And that way, they don't need to worry about blowing out or doing anything wrong. And um, so it's interesting to watch the different segments and what they do. Right, makes it easy from that standpoint. You yeah. just have it have it set to where. Most of the time you're, you're dead on and you yep. get the top end. Yep, yep. Um, 
that makes a lot of sense. And as far as the bass market goes, um, do you feel like it is the the best way to gain some the fastest way to gain some miles per hour on your boat by adding a hydraulic jack plate if you don't have a hydraulic jack plate? Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. I see guys that do gain those three, four, five mile per hours uh, on their setup. Um, it's a combination of that setback and dialing in your prop shaft height. Um, and depending how hard you want to go up for those big numbers, uh, as you start lifting that motor up on the jack plate, you're going to get your RPMs going up because it's easier to spin up closer you are to the surface. So you can go to that bigger prop if, if that's what you're looking for is top speed and jump up to that bigger prop as well and really chase down that high number. Um, I kind of relate it to a suspension kit. You know, you're not adding horsepower, but you're certainly getting better times. Um, Jack was huge, huge upgrade to your boat. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I had no idea what I was missing. No. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the thing that I keep hearing from anyone with hydraulic jack plate is, uh, you know, I'll never buy another boat without one. Like, yep. Always from, yep. from here on out, just to, just to have that ability. And, um, I think like you said, it takes a little bit of time to kind of dial in your exact setup and, and that kind of a thing on, on how you get that feel. But it's the same to me as kind of when you first are just having a boat, just trimming a boat and, and learning when you kind of get on pad and when to start jacking that trim up and where you need to have it set when you're in rough water. And that is the same concept It's just another lever to pull. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now I see too, you guys do, I, I've seen definitely pictures of like, I mean the, the Bob's logo is a race boat or you know kind of a thing so is that how much does that play are, are in these race boat circuits do they are they allowed to have hydraulic jack plates or i have no no knowledge at all with that stuff but but how does that play oh yeah they, they can different class a lot different types of jack plates a lot of them are fixed jack plates they don't want to okay. have the hydraulic on that a lot of racers also want just the the again simplicity they know that boat's going to leap on plane so quick you know just in the blink of an eye so yeah. they just want to set up for their top speed because that's how they're running it um, some guys that similar to, you know, you have a trim computer, you know, you mash your foot throughout it automatically knows to trim you down at certain angles. A lot of guys do setups like that for jack plates as well. Um, a lot of offshore, you know, the XCAT guys, they all run jack plates. Um, yeah, jack plates is big in that. When Bob first started, there was a much bigger outboards racing in America. It's definitely not the same domestically as it used to be. Gotcha. Overseas boat racing is still very big. We have a lot of racers in Scandinavia, uh, Finland, Norway, Sweden. Really? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. They're a great group of guys. So a lot of fun with them. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah, we, we make solid motor mounts. We make exhaust systems. Uh, you know, a lot of that's still the two-stroke motors. People are still running a lot of the old 2.5s and a lot of the 3.0s are still being run for a lot of that. Um, obviously, people are starting to do the four-strokes more and more. I think it's – racing always kind of seems to be a hard push to new things. You know, people like what right. they like. They have so much stock, so many extra pistons, so, so much gear. And it's wild to watch them at the races. I mean, none of them run stainless hardware. They all run grade eight hardware and they're changing it every other race. You know, they don't care about, you know, things rusting out. You know, they change it so often. It's really cool to see their their pit crew set up and how they do it. It's different. I bet. That's really cool. Well, I that I mean, I've got a friend that's big into to motocross racing and he's like, Yeah, I mean, everything was two stroke forever, right? And then and then like even then all these trail riders were riding four strokes, but everyone racing still wanted the two stroke. And then now like one four stroke hits the market and then they're like in the racing scene and they saw the power and the, the low end torque and everything. And then now everything switched to four. It's just, it's like, you're right. I feel like there is kind of like a delay there for like the racing scene guys. Yeah. Yep. It'll get there. So yeah. But uh, racing, racing is a lot of fun. So it's getting better. I think now too, with the four strokes, the emissions are so much better. Hopefully the restrictions start, being easier in America and we start seeing a little bit more of it here in the States again. Um, we'll see. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. That's awesome. Well, Steve, I really just wanted to say, uh, thanks for taking the time out, man. And, uh, and giving us a little bit of an insight on the Bob's machine brand itself, talking a little bit, uh, of jack plates for folks. Hopefully this, they've found this, uh, um, educational too, from the standpoint of some of this conversation. I know that some of this stuff to me, I, I don't know on, and it's been cool to, uh, to talk to the guy behind it all and to hear it all. Um, but how can folks uh, follow along with Bob's or, or get in touch with you guys? So uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's all at Bob's machine or youtube.com slash Bob's machine. Uh, no shop, just Bob's machine. Uh, website, Bob's machine.com. Um, my email, if you ever want to bother me, welcome to it. Steven with a V S T E V E N at Bob's machine.com. Um, always like talking to people. Uh, 
So I appreciate you having me on and uh, a lot of fun. And again, if anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email or a uh, or Facebook message or Instagram, whatever, and we'll chat back with you. Heck yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, folks, blow up his email. That would be uh, that'd be great for Steve. He's probably already got enough on his plate, but uh, always ask those questions and uh, get educated, man. Some of this stuff is, is really, really cool to me. You invest all this money into your boat, into your motor, all this stuff. And to me, uh, something like a hydraulic jack plate gets you the, the max performance out of things. It's one of those value adds that I see a, a certain benefit in for sure. And in rough water and, and not just uh, your top end speed. Yeah. So awesome. All right, Steve. Well, with that guys, we are going to get out of here. Thanks again for taking your time, taking the time out and uh, have a good weekend, man. You as well. Take care.